Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and build update number five of our 1957 Revell Cadillac Eldorado Brome. Well, this 4,000 pound beast is sure starting to come together now. So let me move the guys out of the way and we'll talk about what we got going on. Oop. Lee, Tim, Lori, Wayne, you can look at them later. Zach, you can't do any more there. Mr. and Mrs. Oh, I am sorry, Eldorado, you need to move. Or else accidents will happen. <laughs> so let's start off by moving this out of the way for a little bit. All right, I want to talk about the front bumper and the turn signals here. I did not like the orange on the turn signals. They weren't supposed to really be there anyhow. So I have two coats right now of flat white on them. Uh, let that dry overnight or two, and I'll hit that with uh, the uh, black uh, panel liner, and then we'll hit it with uh, a drop of quick shine once that's dry. But the other thing I did is I painted the bumpers on the, uh, on the cones. And I'm, I'm really happy with how they came out. I was worried about getting them even. I know I'm never, ever going to even be able to breathe on them because that paint will probably scratch off. But they look good for now, so I am happy. I will hit with just a drop of quick shine on those, and that's just the acrylic craft paint that I always use. So those are looking really good. That bumper, I'm finally going to be happy with it. That orange just bugged the heck out of me. The headlights. Remember a while back, I hit them with um, my gloss Mod Podge, which I can never spell right. Uh, today, I got tired of looking at that gloss Mod Podge doing nothing, so I put a drop of gray panel liner over top of that. Just one drop. I let it soak in for a second, and then I dabbed up the extra with the uh, Q-tip. And now, I'm happy with those. They actually do look like light lenses. Um, don't think I'm going to hit them with the quick shine. Not sure. We'll see what happens when I do these. But for right now, that's a heck of a lot better than they did look. Um, they just were too chromey. So there's the front bumper, headlights, turn signals again. Let me move that out of the way. And yesterday I was busy as heck down here. Got a lot done um, watching old <laughs> watching old B movies. So let's start with the steering wheel. That is the nicest steering wheel I think I've ever done. And I thought like three times that it was upside down, but it's not. Um, it only can fit on there one way. So that's what we got. I'm trying to keep my hand away from it because that's um, that chrome is my um, is my that is my um, quickly dying uh, Molotov pen. So I'm gonna have to get a new one of these here pretty soon. But man, oh man, did that go on there good? And what I ended up doing was putting a little puddle on the corner of my mat and dipping the pen itself into the puddle and getting a bunch on there and then coming over and putting it to where it just ran off of the of the pen and did that and I don't think I could have got it a, a nicer it almost looks like I um, sprayed it or had it like a chrome part and I painted around it so I did that I got the two sticks left the blue on the sticks but I did do the little end pieces that they had on there with the chrome. So there was a lot of chrome in this car. Um, I know the bumpers were aluminum, but there's still a lot of chrome here. Um, next, I did some trim work. I pulled out the bare metal foil. Not a biggie on bare metal foil. I don't use it that much, but boy, I had to use it on this. The uh, front and back glass I did 
And I know I said I wasn't going to, but I lied. <laughs> because I bare metal foiled these whole trim strips. Um, I had to. It just, it looked horrible. I've seen a bunch of um, videos where I kept looking at them and seeing this is like a more muted uh, chrome. And then I watched three videos the other day and I looked at a couple of pictures and that chrome was as chrome as it can be. And where I saw, if you want to watch an old B movie, because that's what made me jump and put the chrome on here, is I watched the uh, um, Gila monster from back in the 50s with the old roadsters. I was watching it because the roadsters are cool. But they have a black 57 Eldorado Brome in there that the guy drives into a ditch. <laughs> And then he gets it pulled out and fixed up and everything, but it was pretty cool. I never noticed that before until yesterday, and I've watched that, sh that movie a couple of times because I do like those, the old roadsters. But if you want to watch a really crummy movie that has some cool cars in it, um, uh, that the Gila Monster is a good one. And I think it's like 50-something, so it's a definite B-movie. But the, the glass came out good. The trim's coming out great. So the next thing I did is I went for the interior. And here's a picture of uh, before and after. Because I did do some bare metal foil. I did some... Um, my... Silver gel pen. This is like three years worth of gel pen here. Is how far down that's gone. And it's still going strong. But I did uh, the gel pen and rubbed it out, and it, I thought that looked really good. The uh, back seat, I bare metal foiled the edge. I did not do this whole thing because it's not supposed to be. Not on this year. I, I looked and checked, and I've seen some of them, that these are actually two-tone, where that would have been white and then the chrome. But I'm just going to leave this. I want just the blue. I really, really like how that came out. This is bare metal foil on the top, and then I hit it with uh, black panel liner. So there is the back seat that I have not glued into place yet. I did a uh, Molotow pen on the trim around here. And then I got this much of the dashboard, or the dashboard, the interior put together. Um, and I'm really liking it. The the trim on here came out really nice the dashboard for how small it is I'll put a picture here here's a picture of the dash um, the gauges there was nothing on there but a little piece of flat so I took um, God what did I take I think I took a sharpened um, needle as a matter of fact to do those gauges and I just tap tap tapped it around just uh, to give the illusion of having the numbers and everything there and that came out good the uh, vent down below I think or a speaker I'm not sure which that is I did uh, bare metal foil and then I hit that with a black panel liner too I did um, bare metal foil on that back seat to uh, I don't know what that was would be for, but there's a, like a a rod going across it, and then that little panel. So I did bare metal foil on it just to highlight it. Um, bare metal foil in between here on this back piece that uh, I think holds the seats in place. I'm not sure it's on both sides. There should be one in between these two seats where these doors these are. Um, these back doors open this way and then the front doors open this way am I right on that no I'm not yeah I am but there's a column that comes down here that latches and it was real cool and I wish this kit had it but it doesn't so it is what it is the back part of this as you can see I did not glue in I just glued in up to the front seats and the reason I did that is when I put this in there I'm going to have to flex this over so that this piece mates up against the body. 
and if I glued that in, I was afraid that it wouldn't flex far enough or it would give me trouble. So there is that. I did the bare metal foil on the side of the seats on both, and yeah, you can't see it, but it's there. Um, the carpet, I, I was told that the carpet's like an inch shag. So what I did is I took that blue that I had in there and I took my pastels and I went over real light with a black and then I went over it real light with a blue too to uh, try to give some depth in there. And I can guarantee you that this camera is not gonna show it, but it does look really, really good in there. A lot better than than I'm that camera because I have the camera kind of washes the uh, the colors out but there's our interior the reason why I'm not putting this in is because I want to be able to see these two holes line up when I drop this into the car and I'm afraid that if this is in because um, this will slide down underneath I can force it in there I've tried it a couple of times I want to be able to pull this back and come up against the back of the the uh, body, and I'm I don't I'm afraid that if I put this in and it sits the wrong way, when I do lock it into place, it it'll, it'll hit here or something stupid, and I'd never be able to adjust it. So this one will go in after. I can just put a bunch of glue right here and here. It has two little pins, so that I can move it, um, tuck underneath and slide it in there. And then I do have just maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and I can rock it a little bit to uh, make that fit. But I just want to make sure that I don't have a huge gaposis or get it to where it's locked and I can't drop it all the way in. So, because remember, this is supposed to go in as you bought, put the body together. But I found that this part of the frame will slide through. This will flex in just a little bit, and then I'll flex it back out up against the body and glue it in so but it's still really cool good detail for you know 1957 um better than i would ever be able to mold but a lot of it's going to disappear once it gets in there and because the hood kind of sits low but there is that uh white walls <laughs> i gave um, the tires, a good shot. I think it was two coats of quick shine to get them up to that. I will come back over this with some, uh, uh, pastels just to dull that back out again. But I wanted that to look like it was kind of armor all ready for the show. And then the white, all that is, is Tamiya's X2 white. And... I put maybe four or five drops, maybe 10 drops of this, I wasn't counting, into a cup like this. And then I put three or four drops of my paint retarder in there. And then on top of that, I added just a little bit of water to thin it out. And I stirred that up real nice and got it to where it was, it was thin to where it would flow. And I took my little brush right here i don't know what its size it is um a three odd my three odd brush and i dipped it in there and when i put it in i had it thin enough to where i could go maybe an eighth of an inch and it would flow to the two uh the two raised parts in here and fill that up now that took me a whole tire before i realized that i wasn't thin enough here to do that so let me pull that tire off this tire is a little more rough and that's because the the paint just was a little too thick and it didn't just flow as nice so you can see the two if you're gonna do this get it to where when you get the paint on there the paint sucks up onto the brush but when you touch it onto something it pulls itself back off and that's what it did in here it just pulled itself off and I was able to go from maybe here to here, and then I'd do it again, and I'd go from here back to it. And then I started bringing it like I was welding back onto itself. And as that little white bead came together, it smoothed out where it wasn't doing that here. And it was getting a little frustrating until I realized what I was doing wrong. 
It's been a long time since I've done uh, <laughs> plastic tires. So there's that, and just for the heck of it, let's drop one of these in here, and we'll see how nice that's going to look. I can't grab it from the back. I was hoping I could and turn it sideways a little bit, but that's going to look sharp. Those rims are nice. They're, the hubcaps are nice. Um, zero detail on the back, but they do look really good. And uh, I think they're gonna look great on this monster. So there we go with that. Um, Mr. and Mrs. got a shot of quick shine yesterday. I brushed it on. Um, didn't care if it was thick or not. I just gave them a good healthy coating of it. So they're just a tint shiny right now. Um, I will go back over this now, well, tomorrow, with um, Quick Shine that's mixed with my Tamiya's uh, Flat Base X21. I'll put maybe four drops of that into a little puddle of Quick Shine, you know, or five drops, and I'll test it on something and see if it dulls it. And once I get it to the dullness that I want, I'll come back over and I'll paint everything. Um, I am going to leave a little bit of sheen on on the flesh, just a little tiny bit, but not like it is right now. I mean, these guys look like they just ran a marathon. <laughs> but what I did, once I got the quick shine on, is like with her hair, I took um, a little bit of dark gray and I just dry brushed it on there to give it a little bit of depth and life because she was looking just too monotone with the hair. Um, I hope this doesn't wash out like it did the other day. But then I, I highlighted and did some light um, coloring on the high parts of this. And all I did is I used the sea, the um, Jeez, I grabbed everything but the right color here. The uh, X17, the sea blue, and I mixed a little bit of white in there since I had the white out already. Mixed a little white and lightened it up and not sure if you'll be able to see that or not with it being so shiny. But what that does is that brings out the highlights, darkens the low sides. So just a quick, doesn't take long. Doesn't take long at all. But it did bring out the uh, um, details a little bit and gave her dress a little bit more life instead of just being boom, um, sea gray or sea blue. And then about an hour ago, so I'm really leery to be even touching this thing, I put a clear coat on the body. Um, it'll need buffed out a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. I don't want this thing to be um, super, super polished. I want it to be more like it would have looked coming off of the factory. But what I did yesterday, because I had the bare metal foil out and everything, is I got all excited and I ran a bare metal foil on both sides of here. Um, what that is for, there's a piece of trim that goes down there. And I put the bare metal foil on there because that'll hide any gaps or, or cavities that um, the trim lost in all the sanding and bodywork I did. Which, toot toot my own horn, <laughs> I don't do bodywork that often because most kits don't ask for it. I do have a couple of uh, uh, mold lines in here or sink marks in here that I missed, but I got most of them. So I'm really happy, especially that trunk. The trunk was all goobered up. And now I'm happy with that, and I'm happy with these wings, because they were horrid. Um, still got a little bit on this one, but you have to really look for it to see it. But the Quick Shine did great. Um, can't think of who it was, but I'll put it right here. I put a thing up saying I'm going to have to try to strip that and somebody said no you can you can clear over top of it 
um, two people actually did. So here's the one, and then here's the other person that saved my bacon. Because I was going to try to strip that, that chrome back off of there, and I think if I would have, I would have probably peeled the paint. So thank you very much for the heads up. Um, I would have screwed it up and then just been, I would have cried because this is the nicest color I think I've ever used before. And uh, <laughs> I would have hated to ruin that. So now I'm gonna let this sit overnight or maybe two days. And what I'll do is then I'll come back with my Tamiya polishing compounds. Um, Look at this one's not even on tight. But I'll come back with a coarse, real lightly, and then the fine over top of that. And I will polish it out just a smidge, just to smooth this out, just some. But I won't go really, really hard on it because I don't want to jack it up, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I keep looking. There's chrome across all these little fins, and I think this is supposed to be a vent. Um, in the front here. I'm not going to even try to paint that black. There's no uh, cut lines for me to get a good uh, line on it, but I will take the Molotov pen or the, the uh, silver pen and I'll come across that once I get it all um, polished out so that it, those will at least stand out. And there were supposed to be two little um, vent things in here on either side. But they're not there, so I'm going to act like they're not. So on the exterior now, the only thing I'll have to do is the trim and the uh, door latches for the chrome. But I still have the whole underside yet to detail up, which is a bunch. It's going to look good. I'm going to have fun with that. So again, I don't want to do anything to this for another probably two days just to let that uh, quick shine and everything just settle out um, and then I'll bring it back with a finished Eldorado so this will be the last update and I'm sure everybody's like geez oh Pete thank you <laughs> but I'm, I'm that close now to where I think everything how about if we just for the heck of it drop this See, that's going to go in there so nice. I just have to kind of weed it around to get it in. And I remember I had to tilt one side and then force the other side. But it'll, it will drop. There it goes. And then I just have to get it to line up. It's in the pin marks. See here, then I'll pull this in and it'll be good. But this is why... Um, I didn't put this in because it needs to kind of force in there and then come back. And I don't think I would have ever gotten this. See, I can do that and hide everything. Um, I don't think I would have got it in even without that. But this is where it goes. I still have this piece to drop in the front to hide that big gap osis there. And I'm wondering, seriously, if this was designed to be able to, to do that this way. But look at how sharp that's going to look. So the next update is going to be the finish. Because we're that close. But anyhow, I'm Mark. This is Grandpa Mark's Hobbies. I appreciate you following along with the build. I'm sure having fun with it. And I'm really loving all the comments the thumbs up and everything and, and all the uh, suggestions I've been getting. So they've helped a lot. So anyhow, I'll let you go. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and a better tomorrow.